Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2010 Lexus IS250C, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness. So whenever you're pulling a small trailer behind your Lexus, maybe a kayak trailer or something like that, you are gonna want the lights to work. That way you'll be safe and legal. And that's where trailer wiring is gonna come into play. You know, that's gonna illuminate all the lights and get that job done. Now the cool thing about this setup is the wiring can actually be stored inside of your Lexus. The chances are pretty good you're not going to be pulling a trailer all the time and if it were me I wouldn't want wiring you know hanging down below the car all the time. With that said it's going to be stored in your trunk so whenever you're ready to use it you can just open up the hatch and if we open up our spare tire cover there, that's where our wiring is gonna be stored. So it's out of the way, out of sight, and out of mind until you're ready to use it. Whenever you are ready to hook up though, it's gonna be super simple. You're just gonna drape that wiring across the back. And when you do this, you wanna avoid the latch area. And it might seem kinda of odd to close the wiring, you know, with your trunk uh, down but it's perfectly fine. The wiring's meant to handle that and you're not gonna damage it or your vehicle. So you'll close it. Then you're gonna have that connection and more than enough length here to hook up to your trailer. This is going to be a four-way flat type connector. Um, very common size, especially on these smaller trailers. So this should power uh, pretty much anything up that you plan on pulling behind your 250. And as far as the construction quality goes, you know, these things are well built. Uh, they should last a long time. Really don't get too many complaints with them, so they do a good job there. Now, as far as the installation goes, believe it or not, it's really not too bad. You know, personally, I was thinking on a Lexus, it might be really involved and challenging, and that really wasn't the case. Um, for the most part, everything's pretty easy to get to, uh, plugs right in. I will say the most time consuming part is just having to route a power wire from the back here up to the battery under the hood, but as long as you take your time, really shouldn't give you too many issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hook it up together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be here at the back of our Lexus and we're gonna be working in the trunk. So go ahead and open that up. And what we need to do is remove the floor covering. So this just pulls right out. And while we're right here, we're also going to grab this foam piece. We're going to set both these off to the side for now. Now we can remove this small panel here. So if you lift up on the hook, take a screwdriver and kind of pop that cover up, it's going to expose a 10 millimeter fastener. So we'll grab our socket and remove it. This whole panel can be lifted up. We'll set this off to the side. There may be a connector there. If there is, not a big deal. Just go ahead and disconnect it. So you can push on that tab and remove it. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side of our vehicle as well. Now we can remove this uh, threshold plastic piece right here. And to do that, there's gonna be some fasteners located just on the inside of it. There's gonna be a total of three plastic fasteners just like this. So one on each end of the threshold panel and one right in the center. And the way to get these out, you can take a flathead screwdriver and simply just pry those out. With those fasteners removed, you can simply just grab the threshold and pop it up and out of place. Now something I did notice, here towards the very bottom, there is two more holes there. Now in our case, fasteners were not in there, but potentially they could have been in the past. So when you go to take this piece off, just check down there as well. If there's fasteners in there, go ahead and pull those out too. Now if you look right here, we're gonna have these cargo hooks and we can remove those, um, one on each side. You're just going to push in on each side of it like that. It'll pop out. 
Put that out of the way for now. And then we can kind of peel this back and there's not gonna be a ton of room to work in here. So kind of bear with us. But what we're trying to do is locate the tail light connector, which is this right there. To give us some more room to disconnect it, I think I'm gonna push it off of the keeper. That way we'll have a little more wiring to work with. So this is it right here. And we need to disconnect it. So we're just gonna have a tab right there. We can push down on it. And separate the two ends. With that said, we're gonna repeat this exact same process over on the other side of our vehicle. Now we can grab our T-connector harness and the side that has the white, red, yellow, and brown wires. This is going to get plugged in over here on the driver's side. So there's our existing taillight connector, factory one. The way this is going to work is it's simply just going to T right into those connections. These only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about plugging them in backwards or anything like that. So what I went ahead and did was just simply secure our converter box down here on the driver's side along this factory wiring. Just use a couple zip ties to keep it in place. Then with that said, I routed the remainder of our loose wiring kind of just behind this panel up through here. The white wire with the ring terminal and the uh, black power wire here, we're just going to let kind of uh, chill for now. The four-way flat connector wire. I'm just going to kind of ball this up and store it down here. This is probably the area we'll keep it in when we're uh, all finished up. And the green wire here, this is going to get routed uh, over to the passenger side. Now I just loosely routed this. I'm not going to secure it just yet. I want to make sure our wiring works and everything else before I get too carried away. With that said, green wire is going to run all the way over and plug into or T into the factory taillight wiring here on the passenger side. So I plug that in uh, the same exact way we did the driver's side and this is what it looks like. What we're going to do now is come back to our white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal. This is going to be a ground wire so we're going to need to secure it to a piece of metal. I'm going to use a self-tapping screw that is provided and I'm going to run this right here in this area. Now we can move to this black wire. This is going to be the power supply and we're going to take one of the included buck connectors slide that over the bare end of the wire and crimp it down and then we're able to grab the big bundle of power wire that comes included one of the ends we're going to strip back the insulation to expose the bare wire underneath give it a good twist to you know help the connection stay nice and tight we're going to take that end, place it into the other end of the buck connector. And then we can crimp it down as well. Now we need to get the other end of our power wire uh, outside of our vehicle. That way we can connect it up front to our battery. So it turns out there's a grommet right here. And what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole in that grommet. Now you may wanna check uh, underneath there, make sure there's nothing of importance, which I've done. The only thing that's there is a plastic shield underneath of our vehicle. So I'm gonna open that hole up. We're gonna take the end of our wire and feed it down. So here's our wire going down through the grommet and once I pushed everything down there uh, what you want to do is come back with some sealer and 
you know, seal that up. That way nothing comes up through into the trunk. Uh, I just use some RTV and we do carry that here at E-Trailer if you don't have any at home. So I went ahead and got that power wire uh, routed up to the front. And when you feed it down, it's gonna be in this panel and you can kind of reach up in the panel and feel around and grab it. So in our case, I started to pull mine out right over here. I ran it up uh, above the subframe. So you kind of see it up through there. You want to do your best to avoid any hotter moving parts, especially in this area. You know, use a zip tie and everything to keep it secure. But with that said, I dropped it down right along through here. Continue to route it forward. See a piece of it there. And at this point, what you can do is just start to push it forward. It'll kind of go, uh, you know, above this panel. And if you kind of peel that out of the way, you can see our brake lines run through there. And that's what I followed. So there's the power wire. Just run straight along. Through here. And at this point, it goes up into the engine compartment. And the way I got it up there is I used a pull wire. So I just dropped down a piece of tubing. You can use a coat hanger, something like that. You drop that down, tape your power wire to it, go back up top, pull on the wire, and it'll bring it right to where you need it to go. Under the hood, here's where our power wire comes on up. And we're gonna connect this to the included fuse holder. So I went ahead and crimped on buck connector and a ring terminal, just like we did the other buck connector in the back. Make sure the fuse is not installed in it just yet. But we're gonna take that fuse holder and attach it to the power wire. You need to hook this up to the positive battery terminal. We can remove this nut. We're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket. We're going to take the ring terminal, slide it over the stud, get the nut started again. Tighten it back down. And once it is tight, then we can come back to our fuse holder, take the included fuse, and push that into position. Now that everything is hooked up, and before we put all of our panels and things like that back together, let's test our wiring, make sure it's working properly. I'm using a tester, which you can pick up here at E-Trailer, and I do suggest using one of these as opposed to plugging into a trailer. That way we can eliminate any potential faults that the trailer might have on its side. With that said, we'll try our left turn, our right turn, our brakes, and our taillights. So now that we've verified our wiring is indeed working the way it should, we can go ahead and focus on getting all of our panels put back in place the opposite way that we removed them. Once you get all your panels back together, you can just take your four-way flat wiring, store it in there by the spare tire, and we're all good to go. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2010 Lexus IS250C.